how to twirl our UVs in the shader, a warping effect similar to that of a black hole. That's the topic of today's video, a new episode in Game Math Theory. Hello everyone, I'm Digby JC Gohill and in this episode, we will try to understand the internal workings of 12 UV node from my add-on Shaderlib. I do have practical videos about the effect on this channel, so feel free to check those out. This video is also platform independent, so whatever I'm going to say will apply to Godot, Unreal, Unity, or even Blender. Now without any further ado, let's get straight to the topic right after the intro. Okay, so last time we left at the rotation. If you haven't watched that episode, you might feel that this video is going too fast, so go check that first, then come back. Alright, so we have a function to rotate our UVs based on this angle, and twirl is very similar to rotation. The only difference is in rotation, for each UV, our angle will always be the same. In twirl effect, I want to make it so that the angle value that I pass as an input vary from each UV. And to be precise, I want to make it so that the angle should be zero wherever our center is and as we move away from that, I want the angle to be increased. Ok, so let me do some preparations first. I will rename the function to twirl UV. Also rename the angle uniform to strength and command this line so we can visualize our UV. So currently we can still rotate our UVs. Now as I said before, I want to change this strength value depending on the pivot and we can do that simply using length function. Length function simply returns the length of a vector from the origin and it should be best if I just show you. Let me comment out these lines and I will return length of our UVs. So return length of UV. Length returns float value, so need to cast it to vector 2. Now we can see these yellow values because in albedo I am passing 0 in blue channel. Let's just simply pass x values of our calculated UVs. And you can see that we get this gradient fade, which is black at the top left, because that's where our UV's origin is. And as we move away from the origin, it gets more white. Now of course to change the origin, we can simply use the center input. Now instead of directly using length of our original UV's, I will first subtract the center from our UV's. And you can see that the black part now moved to our pivot. And if I change the pivot, the values also move accordingly. Now I want to change this angle red input based on this length. So here let's go angle red multiply equals length of UV. And this will make it so that our angle will always be zero at the pivot and as we move away, it will get bigger and bigger. Let's just visualize that, so return angle red. So we can see that our angle red look like this. And now it is pretty simple. I will simply rotate our UVs with modified angle red. So here I will just uncomment and also add back our pivot to prevent the shifting of our texture. So I will also uncomment this line and then return our UVs and we don't need this. Now our UVs look weird because I have passed UV.x in blue channel. I will simply pass 0. We have our nice UVs back and as I increase the strength, Our UVs will warp like this. And let me sample the texture so we can see what it does to our texture. Let's comment this and comment this. Let me change the strength. And it warps our texture like this. 
Pretty cool. Let's replicate this logic in Unreal now. And I'm sure Unreal folks will be glad this time because there is no 12 UV node in the material editor. Ok so last time I have created the custom rotate node. I will simply rename it to 12 UV. Double click our custom node. It will open our subgraph. Now all we have to do is first find the length of our UVs based on our pivot. So simply take subtract nodes output and feed it into length node. Then simply multiply our angle with our length. Finally take our multiply nodes output and feed it into cosine and sine. And we have our 12 node. But the preview looks weird. That's because I'm using time as an input angle. So it has warped our UVs too much. Let me pass angle that just goes back and forth between 0 to 10. So here let's take our time and feed it into sine node. So our values will ping pong between minus 1 and 1. Then take sine node and feed it into add node. So here we are adding 1 so our values will now ping pong between 0 to 2. Now I will simply multiply 5 so it will go from 0 to 10. Keep in mind that you can use remap value range node here. I just don't want to create bunch of constants so I have done this. Finally take our multiply nodes output and feed it into the angle pin. And now we can see our UVs warp and unwarp like this. Awesome. Now I have also created swell UV node for my add-on. So let's quickly look at that as well. Ok I am back in Godot. Let me copy our 12 UV function. I will call it Swall UV just to differentiate the name. So previously I was calculating angle in a ways so that it would be zero at the pivot and increase as we move away. In Swall UV function I want opposite of that. I want full angle values that we pass at the pivot and as we move away from pivot I want the angle values to decrease. So let's first visualize our length of UVs. In fragment processor let's comment this line and then comment this one. Let's pass uv.x in blue channel, then use our swirl uv instead. Ok, so our length look like this. Now to invert it, first thought can be that let's just use one minus of the length. Actually let's just use separate variable for that. So here let's go float inverse length equals 1 minus of length of uv and then pass inverse length here and this looks fine at the first glance but there is a catch here let me set the pivot to 0 0 okay so our inverse length is 1 at the origin here and as we move away it decreases but once we pass this point our inverse length will be negative because our original length can basically go beyond 1. So if I invert the values for a moment, you can see that we indeed had negative values here. So we need to clamp our inverse length between 0 and 1. So here let's go clamp, then pass values to clamp, then minimum value 0 and maximum value 1 and let me get rid of this minus here then I can simply multiply my angle with inverse length but before I do that 
my inverse length goes from 0 to 1 linearly, which I don't like. I want to set some ease out as our length decreases. Okay, so inverse length goes 1 to 0 linearly, and I want to ease it out as we reach near 0. I can do that using power. If I use power of 2, you can see we get this nice smooth curve here. Now power simply darkens the values which are less than 1 as we increase the power and hence we are getting this nice ease out curve. In shader lip I'm using power of 3 but this can be tweaked to your liking. Okay so here let's go power then we pass our values and raise to 3. Now simply multiply our angle with inverse length Then the rest will be same, so uncomment these and get rid of this line. In the fragment processor, let's set our blue channel to 0 again. In the inspector, let's set pivot to center, strength to 0. And now as I increase the strength, our UVs will warp like this. Let's sample the texture so we can see how it looks. And then this line and comment this one. And our texture warps like this. So the key difference here is in our 12 UV function, our texture was warping more at the edges. In our swirl UV function, our texture will warp more at the center and less near the edges. Nice. Now for Unreal folks, I am not recreating this in Unreal. You guys are capable enough to do that on your own now. I believe in you. And that's pretty much the video. If you find the video helpful, hit the like button, share it with your friends, subscribe for more videos like this. If you have any questions, post them in the comments. Buy Cosmic Roads on Steam. If a precision platformer is not your cup of tea, then just spread the word. That's it from me and I will see you guys on the next one.